Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, everyone. I'm very happy to see that uh, so many of you have found the way to the Norwegian Institute of International Affairs this morning for our seminar on Generation Putin. Uh, my name is uh, Helge Blokkesrud. I'm the head of the research group on Russia, Asia, and international trade here at uh, NUPI. And welcome also to our online audience. This seminar is as all seminars at NUPI these days also streamed online. And if you want to go back, for th those of you who are here in the, the audience today, if you want to go back and check some of the things that were said, you can also find it on NUPI's YouTube channel in the future. So the topic today is Generation Putin. Some of you were here uh, at NUPI in the fall when we had uh, Russian political scientist and, and commentator Yekaterina Shulman talking about uh, scenarios for transition of power in Russia. And uh, during the Q&A, uh, Yekaterina uh, was talking about the Putin generation. She mentioned it briefly that uh, uh, the Putin generation, uh, or what we can call the Putin generation, the generation that has grown up in Russia since the turn of the millennium, now coming of age, and has known no other leader than Vladimir Putin, that this generation uh, may uh, be instrumental in ushering in political change in Russia. And I was intrigued by this because usually we hear that the, the, this Putin generation or youth in Russia are more conservative than their parents, more uh, loyal to the regime uh, and its continuation. So uh, we wanted to, to, to learn more about what's going on uh, among the Russian youth. Um, was, Schum was Schumann right? Uh, what are the norms and values uh, among Russian youth today? What are the political views, uh, their worldviews? Uh, in short, how different are they? from their parents' generation. And uh, to tell us more about this, uh, to inform us, we have invited uh, Denise Volkov, uh, who is a deputy director of the uh, Levada Center uh, Moscow, uh, in Moscow, uh, Russia's leading independent uh, uh, survey institute. Uh, I think no one is better placed uh, than Denise to, to uh, talk about this. He has been uh, following uh, attitudes, norms among the Russian youth for uh, for a long time and published extensively on this. Denise will speak for some 40 minutes uh, before we open up, uh, as usual, th the floor for Q&A. But you did not come here to listen to me, so uh, I'd like to give the floor, without further ado, to Denise. Please. Uh, hello, uh, good morning, thank you for coming. So um, I'm going to present uh, uh, the data and speak about the data that we have in Levada Center. And um, I would say that uh, my particular interest in uh, uh, this topic in uh, Russian youth and its uh, political attitudes came uh, uh, as uh, with many uh, many researchers in in Russia after the uh, protests uh, that uh, was organized by Navalny in uh, 2017, when uh, some there was a lot of attention uh, to uh, young people, what uh, why they are protesting, uh, and whether they are well the most uh, uh, skeptical of uh, Russian uh, of Russian regime, Putin's regime which was not exactly the case. Uh, but interestingly, uh, 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 this uh, is now changing a little bit, though the changes are not uh, very big, but still uh, uh, last year when uh, there was a big, uh, rather big change uh, in uh, public um, attitudes towards uh, Putin, towards the regime, uh, when the uh, pension reform uh, plans were introduced. The young people, surprisingly, were also changing uh, their opinion uh, about Putin, and I will uh, show, show it. So my 
main instrument here that I, uh, we have a lot of uh, public opinion polls and I was looking through uh, well almost uh, all of all major uh, major polls that we had for several years just to uh, concentrate and to find the uh, the biggest uh, uh, differences uh, so uh, this presentation will be more uh, concentrated on uh, differences how different uh, young people are but and we will see that uh, um, on some issues they are <laughs> more different and others uh, they're not so different uh, with um, uh, with um, uh, all, all the generations and uh, we also done uh, have done several focus groups so we're doing them just uh, um, on a regular basis with young people uh, as well just to discuss uh, general issues and how and to understand how young people uh, think of what's going on in the country so I try to use this knowledge as well uh, first uh, some general uh, uh, general slides about general moods of young people and usually, uh, usually uh, they are more confident about the future, uh, and uh, they are more satisfied uh, with the uh, situation uh, situation in the country. And this is not uh, uh, not surprisingly because young people uh, usually have support of uh, their families, uh, and uh, as we shall see in a couple of slides, they are in some uh, in some sense more. Uh, prepared for the uh, new kind of work and to be uh, uh, well, successful in new uh, new economy, knowing uh, English language, uh, for example. Uh, but we will uh, come uh, uh, come to this. So uh, and um, so, it was not surprising that uh, young people uh, that young people were uh, until recently uh, uh, one of the most supportive. Uh, Groups, uh, age groups towards the regime, towards Putin, because well, they didn't have much to complain about. Um, and um, but when you, we can see what kind of changes uh, Russia need, you see that uh, well, it's not that much different with uh, 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 with young people as the country as a whole. And my uh, one of my uh, thoughts here uh, and to the. Uh, presentation is in general that still young people are part of uh, Russia society, Russian society, and uh, we should not expect uh, that they are, uh, will be absolutely different from uh, and have absolutely different thoughts about what's going on and how they understand the world. Um, but uh, so here is uh, more general attitudes just to show that um, Young people, at least in their uh, younger days, they are thinking more about uh, being more independent and uh, would like to, to uh, would like to organize their own business on a, uh, more frequently than uh, older generations. But uh, I think, uh, uh, as we have, uh, we see here only. Um, uh, differences among uh, generations, so it might uh, come up, uh, like with uh, um, I will tell about this a little bit later. But uh, with the attitudes towards the West, we always see that young people are more positive uh, uh, about the West, but then they grow up and <laughs> become uh, become a little bit more negative. So uh, this is maybe uh, uh, their hopes, uh, their hopes and aspirations. But then they grow uh, grow up and uh, come up with uh, difficulties and uh, might uh, change their uh, 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 their attitudes. But it's at, at least what uh, what we are having. I think I think it's uh, 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 significant. And uh, just to uh, to give you some uh, other ideas, not only about politics, uh, just uh, uh, here we also have, uh, well, I would say significant differences. Uh, here I uh, made it uh, 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 for, uh, for, for, this, uh, for this age group, I, uh, uh, how is it, not rotated, but uh, so it's from the biggest to the uh, smallest, and uh, you, you can see that these are the preferences of younger generation, and these are 
for the older generations. Well, maybe not surprisingly, that's why it is rather chanson and folk. Well, folk, it's not uh, uh, maybe uh, it's, uh, not. It's more like uh, traditional Russian, uh, traditional Russian uh, uh, songs, which are well also organized, uh, ar arranged like uh, close to Russian pop as well. Um, so, uh, so, but but these are the differences that we have, and I think this is also interesting and interesting that we have this in uh, in uh, uh, data, because some differences it is very hard to. Uh, get from uh, 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 public opinion polls uh, because in public opinion polls it shows up only when it is on a mass scale and this is uh, this is uh, uh, interesting because uh, this kind of a new uh, new wave and uh, and uh, Russian uh, Russian rap uh, is also as we as you might uh, uh, know is rather critical about the uh, about Russia's politics, and uh, uh, and interestingly, that this is in this age group that uh, they might uh, uh, well partly pick up these uh, uh, thoughts, but also it's kind of an expression of the uh, moods that they, uh, that uh, that are there in uh, in this generation. Um, and also, I think uh, significant changes and. Uh, uh, Mm, I just wanted to show it to you that this is attitude towards the LGBT people and uh, 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 the youngest age group is uh, the most uh, it's m more neutral than positive but still uh, you can see that it's uh, uh, so, so significant differences that we uh, that we uh, that we have here and uh, um, in uh, uh, also put this uh, this slide uh, uh, because it also uh, kind of uh, helps me to uh, make my argument that this is uh, this generation is more open open to the uh, not to the world to the uh, uh, other differences and I think in this case it's more uh, dependent on this uh, fact that uh, uh, this group has uh, significantly more uh, LGBT people as their friends and uh, the group that have LGBT people as their friends is even more positive uh, about LGBT people. So, uh, so, but uh, 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 let us go to the, I think, the most significant difference. Uh, and uh, this showed up uh, only, I think, I mean, manifested itself, uh, uh, I think, about two years ago when uh, I uh, internet uh, became as important to young people as uh, TV in general. Here I, would, uh, I will help you to understand, to, sh uh, to follow this slide. So we have uh, several sources of information uh, th that we monitor it. It's TV, internet, social networks, oh, sorry, it's uh, uh, friends, uh, friends and acquaintances, radio and, uh, and newspapers. Country as a whole, and uh, youngest age group, and uh, older age uh, age groups. So uh, here you see that uh, in the country as a whole, TV is still um, uh, 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 the most important. This is the data from the last year. We will have uh, new data very soon, uh, uh, but I do not expect big differences. Uh, uh, that so uh, TV is important, but we c uh, we can see how uh, how. Uh, internet and social networks are growing, and in this age group, age group, it is uh, a bit more uh, more uh, important than TV, or I would say as important uh, as uh, as TV, which is not the case in uh, other age groups, especially in these uh, these two age groups, when the well TV you see is I mean absolutely absolutely the most important source of information but here is uh, here is the difference and this means that uh, 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 the young people are not that uh, 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 dependent on uh, uh, propaganda on the on the media at least on the topics of their interest so when uh, the people uh, young people are interested in some topic they can uh, google it or uh, use yandex to um, mm, uh, find it out, but uh, as we, sh uh, we shall see, uh, politics is not uh, that 
what they are interested in. So uh, uh, these changes, these changes in uh, how uh, information is uh, consumed by young people is, uh, uh, in political sense, it is the change for the future. So it will change. Uh, it might change uh, in uh, in some years, in the years to come. Uh, not exactly now, but I think this is important. And th this uh, this uh, 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 happened, I think, in the s 2017, about this time. Uh, and um <coughs> Uh, so to uh, to show you that uh, so uh, what is important in this slide it's top t uh, top uh, uh, five TV channels and they are all uh, state uh, controlled TV channels uh, but uh, again they are not uh, uh, as popular with the uh, young generation than with the uh, older uh, older generations and yes and speaking about uh, internet uh, why it's also not that straightforward that it's uh, not that different because uh, I will go go back because here in uh, in the internet uh, the major source of information is still uh, Yandex News which is uh, uh, there are a lot of scandals there were a lot of scandals that they're tampering with the, uh, uh, the algorithms and uh, uh, Two weeks ago, there was a big scandal that uh, on uh, top top news on Yandex News, uh, there were more news about uh, Zelensky than about Putin and about Russia. Uh, so there are some questions. <coughs> uh, so uh, and uh, here's the uh, uh, the ratings of uh, different programs on TV, but not only on TV because we put here. Uh, Yuri Dut as well and his uh, his program because we had uh, we gave a list of programs uh, giving uh, uh, like like Vicherny Urgant on Channel One or Andrei Malakhov and uh, her, uh, his uh, a very uh, popular TV show on Russia One and just to compare uh, this new a uh, new guy who is doing interviews and recently was doing uh, was uh, making uh, uh, a documentary about Kalema which became rather uh, rather interesting and uh, got some uh, uh, news and uh, and likes and was uh, watched uh, so uh, here is uh, what is important here uh, this is uh, country as a whole. It is you can't compare it with uh, like Solovyov or Kiselyov. Here's the country as a whole. You, you can you can see, but with young younger generation, you can see they are all very close, and you ca already can compare uh, uh, Dutch uh, within young generation to uh, Kiselyov and Solovyov. So it's becoming uh, becoming an issue. And uh, uh, what is <laughs> I would uh, like to re uh, um, uh, highlight that we are getting it in our public opinion polls, uh, which means that there's already some some differences. And uh, so the programs, the programs, and uh, somehow, uh, not surprisingly, we got the uh, the same with the most trusted journalists. Uh, uh, previous question: We gave it. Uh, uh, we gave a list of uh, TV shows, and here is and it's an open question, open question. So when where people were just naming uh, any any name they wanted, and we just put it. So the the picture is very uh, very similar. So country as a whole and two uh, uh, um, uh, opposite uh, age groups. Um, Malakhov and Solovyov, Kiselyov and Posner are the most uh, most uh, important in country as a whole. Uh, absolutely important with the older generation, so red bars. But with young people, you can see that uh, here is Dut, Posner, Kiselyov. Uh, they got to the same, the same, seven percent. Well, Malakhov, of course, uh, uh, more, uh, which with uh, uh, this show being uh, more social. Interestingly, Solovyov got uh, uh, gets his attention with young people uh, uh, as well. But it's more about you. You see that it's more about the sources and channels of information how people got 
uh, got it. Who, who's on the news? Uh, they're in the uh, people's minds. Um, so, and uh, uh, this, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, with sources of information and in internet use is, I think, the most important and the most significant change in the sense that uh, we have the most significant differences. But probably there, there are some, other, some others as well, but I didn't, uh, didn't uh, uh, find them in our data. So, uh, with the internet, uh, I think it's also uh, uh, his country as a whole. The most important is this age group. Uh, those who uh, use the internet several times a day, you you can see that with the internet. Uh, w uh, I mean, uh, even if you count occasionally, it will be pretty uh, pretty significant number of 70 percent of Russians. But uh, these are people who are uh, not confident in the internet, and uh, uh, and um, with younger generation, it's like like this. And I think. Uh, this difference and this uh, this number not a big uh, big number w with country uh, as a whole and absolutely small with uh, uh, older generations it uh, helps us understand why many people in Russia support uh, the restrictions on the internet and the social networks and telegram when we ask uh, uh, the majority say yes please uh, make these restrictions and it is uh, Absolutely fascinating how young people explained it uh, on our fo focus groups. Uh, we, were, uh, we were speaking about these uh, restrictions and they said, well, we don't need them. No, we don't need them uh, and maybe it's a bad idea, but thinking about our uh, parents, well, maybe it's a good idea. Because as young people are saying, my mother uh, does not feel confident on the on the internet, she she can be she can be cheated, uh, and well, bad stuff can happen to her. So maybe in this sense, it is a good idea. So it's how uh, even young people who are absolutely, absolutely confident in the internet in their majority can support, or part of them can support these restrictions. And here's the argumentation that uh, they are giving. But still uh, many many uh, confident young users feel uh, uneasy uneasy about it and uh, i think uh, uh, we will talk more about it a little bit uh, when we come come up to the political changes and <coughs> it will uh, happen soon so uh, another slide about social networks uh, here what is important well, f for sure that uh, this big gap between uh, um, uh, younger generation country as a whole, younger generation and uh, older generation, I mean, I mean, absolutely huge gap, a huge gap. Uh, and, uh <coughs> and also I think these three social networks well, Adnaklasniki is uh, as important, almost as important in uh, Vka uh, as Vkontakte with country as a whole, but it is not so with the younger generation. And uh, for younger generation, these are most important. Uh, and uh, this helps us to, uh, to uh, explain this, the, uh, the role of YouTube and video bloggers. Uh, and this ca ca came uh, with the younger generation, first of all. So uh, duty is one uh, the most significant example, but uh, this is uh, but uh, duty is only one of them, only one of them, and uh, there's uh, the whole new uh, kind of a space for uh, video bloggers just because of this, because of this, uh, because of this uh, uh, that YouTube is growing significantly and Instagram is growing, and uh, uh, not surprisingly, we have many politicians. And uh, not only uh, musicians like Filip Kirkorov, but also Ramzan Kadyrov, who is acting active on Instagram. Uh, so they are using uh, uh, some uh, the most uh, uh, rapidly rapidly growing social networks. And Vkontakte, Vkontakte is uh, uh, it. W it is. Uh, it's not new that it is uh, uh, that important with uh, young people, w uh, and uh, if you took, if you take young people in b living in big cities, it will be absolutely almost everyone. So you can 
uh, reach out to almost everyone, uh, every young person through, uh, through Vkontakte, which is, uh, which is the same, almost the uh, same as Facebook, uh, very similar, but it is a kind of a national, national one. And uh, in this sense, uh, I, when I try to uh, explain why Vkontakte is so, uh, uh, mm, popular, well, probably because there's many this pirate, uh, pirate stuff, music, uh, films, and so on. But it's also these differences because uh, not many people have uh, friends abroad, so they don't need this Facebook to be uh, to reach out to their friends uh, outside of the country. And uh, Facebook, Facebook, Twitter, you see, that's not that important. Uh, but uh, it may be, imp and it is important uh, when we speak about the well, uh, intellectual part of uh, uh, Russian society, or liberal part, uh, who, are, uh, who are on display experts. Uh, I am on Facebook. Uh, many experts are on Facebook, not on Vkontakte, which is not maybe that wise to do, but, uh, <laughs> but it is very hard to, to do both, at, <laughs> at least. So, um, uh, but uh, in, uh, in this, um, mm, so the, these, these are important uh, for this uh, part, intellectual part, who it tries to be uh, in um, connection with the uh, outer world, but it's not the case with the uh, country as a whole. And just to have you an idea, these differences in social networks, like trends are very consistent and, uh, well, it's not changing that much. I mean that these, uh, this age group do, do not, uh, uh, how is it, uh, do not come, uh, do not, do not, uh, does not come close to the uh, uh, younger one. So uh, uh, let's go to the uh, political preferences, which is uh, uh, there will be uh, differences, but the differences not on this huge scale that we uh, saw here. Uh, and I think this uh, uh, partly explains it. It's uh, interest in politics, uh, three, uh, three questions to measure it, and only positive answers. Th uh, so uh, uh, these are uh, numbers in percentage in uh, different age groups, younger, from younger to older. So this is uh, those who follow news, uh, follow news and events, uh, who, who discuss them, and who un say they understand these events. And you see, pretty, pretty same, pretty same with the uh, uh, younger group uh, uh, being not so interested in politics. And this means it's not what they will check, double check and will not find out uh, on, uh, on, the, um, <coughs> on the internet. So in uh, uh, these issues, in political issues, they, uh, this generation, younger generation, is more dependent from their uh, uh, relatives and grown-up people, so they just borrow them uncritically. And it's only uh, in the uh, following years that they will or will not challenge these uh, basics about politics. So those who will challenge them, they will have all the instruments to do this. But uh, as we see, again, not everyone, not everyone is interested. And even in the, uh, the most uh, interested uh, age groups, uh, it's uh, still uh, a half, only a half or, or less. So one, uh, one, uh, one uh, half will not challenge anything uh, that they have on the kind of, uh, as cliches, uh, borrowed from the, uh, in their childhood, or not childhood, in their youth, uh, uh, from uh, gro uh, uh, older people. So, and this is about uh, uh, one of several questions to measure, actually, uh, participation. It's not the only uh, only ones that we had, but still, I think it's very telling. And um, again, the same pattern from the youngest to the oldest. Uh, uh, and this is about we asked about the fact whether they voted in the regional elections, in the parliamentary elections, or presidential elections. So it's uh, all these three questions from uh, last year. 
um, from but from different months and uh, uh, and well it will be about 50 percent uh, is in a country as a whole a, le uh, a little bit less here and uh, less uh, even less here but you can see that uh, those uh, the older age groups are most uh, active politically so we we saw that they are more dependent on t tv as a main source of information and these are groups uh, on uh, on which um, the government is more uh, dependent and uh, care about so in some sense if there's less resources to to uh, uh, give out and support uh, and attract uh, uh, people's attention, uh, my guess is that uh, the government will uh, address the needs of these uh, these groups and uh, in, uh, in the longer run it may or may not, but it may uh, alienate a little bit these, uh, 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 these groups because uh, the government will have to choose. And uh, <coughs> trust in politicians, it's the, it is uh, uh, much, I think, this year. And uh, we have already rather different picture because if we uh, if we uh, took uh, the same question, it is the uh, open-ended question, uh, and we had uh, with this kind of methodology, we had a scandal last week. Maybe you heard about it that Tsom uh, decided not to ask these open-ended questions. Well, don't know why. Maybe because f pressure from from uh, from uh, the government, but uh, I think it's very interesting because we have a dynamics dynamics here. But here it's only in the the last question uh, broken in different age groups, and we have that uh, you see the younger uh, the younger generation is not already as uh, supportive of Putin, but. But still, it's the most trusted politicians. Still, the most trusted politicians. But if we uh, have uh, this question um, in the uh, beginning of uh, last year, before all this bad news, uh, the young generation will be as supportive as the oldest generation. So we try to uh, talk with young people themselves and ask them, so why their friends uh, are whether they have some friends who are less supportive of Putin right now, and uh, if yes, why? And uh, well, partly, uh, partly they were telling about pension reform, but not for themselves, but for their parents. Uh, so they were <coughs> talking about that my parents will suffer, but uh, the majority of young people themselves don't think about this, and uh, many just say that there will no pension at all. Uh, when they uh, uh, reach the pension age and uh, might m significantly more people say that they will depend on their savings not on the not on the state state support uh, but uh, what is also uh, what what other rationale people uh, were uh, uh, giving that it's uh, they were speaking about uh, um, criticism on social networks they were uh, speaking about the, uh, these uh, uh, restrictions that the government was doing, and so it, at least it w w were the topics that uh, the uh, young people themselves cared about and were giving them. Again, it's not the uh, we didn't um, uh, uh, check it in the um, public opinion polls and it is rather hard to do so but in w what focus groups show that this was important and uh, maybe <coughs> as well uh, somehow with all these changes and restrictions the government is uh, not uh, and uh, state politicians are not as appealing to young people now as they used to be but still still uh, though the these uh, these changes are there i mean uh, they are not no more the the biggest fans but they are still uh, support support putin and uh, you can see that uh, there are uh, more support uh, with young generations uh, uh, with Zhirinovsky not Shoigu, Lavrov or, or, or Zyuganov, which are more 
important for the older generations. But Zhirinovsky, which was always the case, part of uh, uh, his electorate was, was, uh, was with young people and is with young people. Uh, Navalny, you see, again, uh, he is much more important for young people, but uh, you see that with uh, uh, politicians, it is uh, not uh, uh, exactly the case as with uh, uh, fig uh, culture figures, because uh, as we see, young people uh, on a uh, larger scale are not interested in politics. But those who are interested, uh, you, you see that uh, Navalny is appealing, m uh, first of all, for, for young uh, generation, and in his supporters, in his support, in supporters that he has, uh, <coughs> it is, uh, there are, uh, first of all, young people. And, uh, but they are not a majority even within the uh, young, younger generation itself. But we also, uh, sp I also spoke about uh, his supporters in a uh, couple of uh, regions uh, outside of Moscow, and I asked, so why Navalny? What is appealing for you in him? And, uh, well, the reason they were giving it was, uh, uh, like, uh, they said he was the first one to come to our region himself and uh, spoke to, to us, and it, this was uh, appealing in itself, I mean, with activists. So it's also the problem of uh, 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 a Russian mm, political, uh, political system, which is too concentrated on Moscow, uh, uh, with, uh, when uh, the politicians, uh, uh, alternative politicians, just do not, usually do not go in the regions. So they see it as futile and they don't go. And uh, when they go, there are some, some differences. And also, of course, uh, he is appealing because he is on social networks and Putin uh, doesn't even have a, uh, uh, some account on social networks. Uh, there is one on uh, Instagram, but it's absolutely... <laughs> absolutely dead and uh, very official, not very interesting. So, uh, also what is significant that uh, this is the youngest uh, 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 generation I, I was uh, uh, ta uh, talking about, so it's uh, the pyramid, uh, the age uh, structure by sex, uh, so male, males, females, but you, you, I think you understand this. So, but younger generation are in these uh, these, uh, so not many young people, there are not so many young people uh, right now, so in uh, with uh, some other years there will be, uh, there will be more, and uh, we m can assume that they will be uh, much closer in uh, their uh, habits to, to this generation, but for now they just can't uh, do much uh, uh, change because uh, there are too few of them, and uh, to uh, and to uh, for this um, mm, uh, change in uh, uh, worldviews and sources of information to influence uh, the uh, political views of uh, 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 younger generation, it's uh, they have to mature and to be more interested, uh, more interested in uh, uh, in politics. So. S other uh, couple of slides, and I will uh, uh, end just to to show you some uh, uh, attitudes towards the West, and uh, there are some significant moments I would like to uh, uh, um, show here. So it's about uh, uh, USA, uh, but because everything about the West, it's first of all about USA with uh, uh, with the Russians. But it's uh, very very significant that a little bit more positive towards the EU. But uh, what I want to show here, uh, two moments. So right now we see these diverging trends with uh, uh, with young. So this is a country as a whole, uh, blue one, a red one. It's uh, the youngest and the oldest, the green one. So diverging trends in, uh, po uh, in positive and negative attitudes with the younger and older generation. Uh, but if you see this, uh, these um, moments, these are moments of the highest confrontation <laughs> with the West about Georgia, about uh, uh, Ukraine and Crimea. And you see when in the moments of this uh, 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 
propaganda and uh, confrontation and uh, this huge, uh, huge um, propagandistic um, events uh, and the effort of the state, uh, the young people are almost the same as uh, the country as a whole and you, even the older generation. So it is still when everything is put in this effort, uh, the government can change the uh, uh, the uh, the moods of the generation. But st maybe uh, right now it will be a little bit harder to do, but still possible. Uh, again, about something about experience. Uh, here is not uh, young people, but young people in big cities. So it's uh, they're more uh, uh, more uh, open towards the West. And uh, these uh, uh, these figures. So this about about experience uh, have been abroad. And here is about the kind of an intention. But of course, it's <coughs> it's not that uh, everyone will uh, emigrate. But I uh, see these uh, uh, figures as a sign of uh, openness to, uh, to uh, the outer world. For them, it's not a problem, and it's not the unacceptable idea to go and live abroad. And of course, it will not. Uh, um, uh, many will will stay, but for them, for them, they at least think about it. So in Russia as a whole, only 14 percent. Here is 44. Of course, uh, they will grow up. Uh, uh, not everything will be as uh, good as and uh, uh, simple as uh, young people uh, think, but still the, uh, the, uh, these ideas there. And interestingly, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, no, I do not uh, have this slide. But with uh, uh, this age group, uh, with youth, uh, with big, uh, big cities, uh, when we ask about the countries Russia should emulate, uh, the Western countries still come come first in spite of uh, the big conflict because uh, because again young people are not about uh, politics they're more about and uh, thinking of uh, uh, the west it's for them it's about the way of life the uh, well-being so it's uh, and it's not about political system when we ask this question to emulate it mean it means simple just to be as prosperous as uh, they are, I mean, uh, the Western countries. And uh, yeah, probably the last slide I have just again uh, to a foreign language to see that they're uh, potentially more open uh, and potentially they are more, uh, can be, m m uh, they are more uh, prepared for the, uh, for the, Mm, a work, a work without a world. It's uh, this uh, uh, that uh, young people know foreign language, and still it is seen as a kind of a uh, asset, asset to to have. So, um, yeah, I think uh, I think um, I can end uh, he uh, here. And so, just to sum up. Uh, 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 so my idea is that uh, young people are still different. Uh, th uh, from uh, older generation in many ways, uh, uh, but uh, they are not uh, 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 that different in their political views. Uh, first of all, because they do not, uh, they are not interested in these things, and they just passively borrow many cliches from the uh, older generations, and not many will challenge uh, challenge them. Uh, because uh, it's not that ordinary people think about. Um, and also with uh, this uh, uh, age group who is 18, uh, 25, there are too few of them to uh, become uh, uh, very much instrumental in political sense and still uh, we see that uh, uh, the most rational thing for the government is to depend and to uh, partner themselves with the older generations who are more active, more dependent on TV, and more dependent on the state budget. So it's kind of a well match with the Putin regime and all the all the public. But in a in a sense it may uh, it may in the long run uh, more uh, uh, alienate younger people more from the regime but again uh, they as there are few of them, they can be integrated in this system much more easily, uh, easily than uh, than uh, people now. So here I 
will end and uh, ready to uh, uh, answer questions. Yeah. <coughs> if you move a bit closer, and we'll <coughs> could you switch off? Uh, thank you. So you ended up, Denise, uh, by saying that it's uh, easier and more rational for the Kremlin to cultivate the older generation, uh, the middle-aged. But of course, th that's not a long-term strategy. Uh, you, you need also to reach out probably to the, to the younger generation um, in, in due course. And before we open up the, the floor, I was just curious about whether you think um, the Kremlin will do that and if they will be able to. You, you talked about a, a, a significant shift uh, when it came to, to the younger generation in, in trust in Putin. Um, will the Kremlin be able to regain that trust or will this younger generation, as you hinted to in other uh, slides, more withdraw from politics, not be interested and just be preoccupied with, with their own lives and their the smaller world, mm -hmm. not, uh, not get engaged or uh, close the ranks behind the Kremlin again. Okay, uh, I think uh, speaking about um, interest in politics, I think it's, uh, again, maybe it will change, but uh, my guess is it's uh, wi with uh, uh, time, when uh, young people grow up, they became more interested in politics because they have just to make sense uh, of the world around them, uh, being more independent, making their own decisions. So we, this, I think, will change uh, eventually. And uh, so, uh, of course, the government will need to deal with it. Uh, and uh, the government is trying to deal with it, uh, not uh, entirely successful but not entirely unsuccessful. And also we see that uh, maybe uh, uh, the strategy will be to uh, integrate and accommodate the most, uh, uh, at, at one point, to accommodate and integrate the most active uh, young people. And I think there will be room for it. And with all these uh, programs like uh, uh, Leaders of Russia, Lidia Rasi, and uh, other programs that Kremlin will try to to do this. And uh, it's not only, I think, not only about politics, it's also about uh, the governance. Uh, we don't know how it will, how long it will uh, be because it, uh, it is uh, in Russia very much connected with Kiryenko as uh, head of this, uh, uh, this block in presidential administration. But this, uh, the trend to attract younger generation, more able people to make uh, the system more uh, work better, to address the needs of uh, ordinary people, to get the support in the conditions of less resources. Um, uh, this one thing. There also another thing that those who protest, they are punished. Uh, it's again not only about young, younger generations, it's uh, about everyone. And we see it in the bigger protests, uh, uh, like uh, Ekaterinburg, uh, Arkhangelsk, uh, in Gushetia. The politics is that uh, at some point, at least in uh, Ekaterinburg and probably in Arkhangelsk, the government can give in on the general issue and can compromise. But those who were active, they will be punished I mean, uh, by money, by putting to prison. Uh, so, I mean, this is also the, how the, the government tried to, to do this. So, um, there is instruments uh, to uh, make people behave as the government would like them to behave. But in other sense, uh, in, in, in political sense, uh, not everyone uh, is um, uh, thinking about this long run because we have 2024 problem and they have to figure out, out what uh, the, the will the, there be a transition, what kind of transition it will be. So it's uh, messy a, a little bit. We have a lot of competent people in the audience, <coughs> so uh, please indicate if you want to uh, 
ask a question, and please introduce yourself. Uh, the first one will be Paul Costa. Paul Costa, University of Oslo. Thank you very much, Denise, for an interesting talk. Um, two small questions. Uh, first, uh, on uh, the, the ask about uh, knowledge of foreign language and have you been abroad. Do the respondents automatically understand that as have you been to the West, a Western country, uh, or and do you know a Western language? Or will those who have been to Ukraine and knows Ukrainian also answer yes? And if they do include the, the near abroad, how many, how, how many will be only have been to a post-Soviet country? And this is another question, um, in West, many Western countries, and we learned today that uh, also in Denmark, the, the climate issue is changing politics very rapidly. Uh, is the climate uh, issue uh, and the climate crisis uh, on the on the uh, political agenda <laughs> in uh, in Russia, uh, and is there any age difference between how people uh, um, see that as a, as a threat to mankind? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, when it is uh, uh, when we ask about foreign language, it's usually English. Usually English, uh, uh, but uh, speaking about, uh, of course, where people were, it depends on the uh, location because uh, uh, when country as a whole, it's more about closer a, a neighborhood. With uh, young people in big cities, it's much more uh, Western countries. Uh, but uh, if you take numbers, I think uh, I think only. 10% of Russians were in Europe uh, or in the West because in the United States f uh, less than 1%. And of course uh, the majority of the country as a whole are going not even in Ukraine but in Turkey, uh, Turkey, um, Thailand. Like, so they go to, uh, for, for to holiday and not uh, interacting with uh, we uh, Western uh, uh, citizens of Western countries. But uh, still it's uh, some, at least some experience. And uh, with uh, 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 people in bigger cities, of course, they have a lot more experience of Western countries than, than uh, population as a whole. Speaking about climate, it's not on the agenda, and um, but we, I think we must uh, put some questions uh, uh, about it, but uh, we just didn't have an opportunity because it's not an agenda. And uh, that's uh, uh, quite uh, often you can hear the joke that uh, for Russia it will be better to have a <laughs> climate, a warmer climate. So it's, I mean, uh, this means that it's not... Uh, informative uh, uh, talk, it's only about some jokes and so on. So I environment is more mobilizing than climate? In, uh, envi uh, ecology, uh, like... Um, like um, Baikal and the landfills? Uh, and Baikal, uh, yeah, garbage uh, dumps, uh, and uh, environment in the city. Uh, it's also about uh, this uh, in Yekaterinburg. It's not only in Yekaterinburg. There, I think, were 28, about 30 cities with a similar uh, conflict when the uh, uh, the cathedral or, or uh, church is built in the park where people like to walk. And uh, generally, when we ask about building cathedrals, the majority uh, approve. You know, more than 70 percent approve. Uh, but when it happens to be <laughs> built in your own uh, uh, environment, th then uh, people mobilize. So uh, these <coughs> environmental issues and ecological issues, they are more. Uh, no, uh, they have this mobilization potential, and they are also very uh, well understandable. People understand what it's what is the problem, and when, for example, there was the issue with Himki forest. Again, the <coughs> almost 80% uh, were sympathized with the defenders of the forest. But uh, it's one sympathy is one thing, but mobilization is another one, and usually only those mobilize who l live closer to the spot. <coughs> Thank you. Od Gunnar Skagestad. I'm an old age pensioner and independent analyst. I've got two questions for you. Uh, the first one is about the uh, age groups that you measure. 
they are hugely different. Uh, there are different cohorts. The youngest one is only a six year span, then you have 15 year spans, and then you have the above 55 years. Uh, does that pose any methodological problems uh, for your work? Second question is about what you mentioned about uh, what happens in the regions when youngsters protest, they get punished. You have uh, uh, perhaps, uh, I don't know if you have any examples. I know one example that is uh, the mayor of Yaroslav, Mr. Urlashov, who was um, uh, jailed on trumped off charges because he had uh, he was hugely popular among youngsters in that region. Do you have s do you see a similar development other parts uh, in other parts of Russia in the regions? Thank you. Well, speaking on uh, <coughs> cohorts, uh, so our polls usually we have uh, 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 we ask uh, people uh, uh, we do not uh, uh, survey people under eighteen. Uh, it, it can be done, uh, but it's only done in uh, uh, several separate surveys. Uh, so, uh, for me, and uh, usually it is uh, uh, ordered for some someone, and I do not, I can't use these figures. But uh, so we can. Uh, uh, the assumption is that uh, those who, uh, because we uh, monitor, uh, and I, I myself monitor this topic for several years, we see that. Uh, and um, that people who are grow, I mean, who are who were 16 or 17 uh, a year ago, or two years ago, they're now 18, and we got them. So they're very much, uh, very much the same. So this is a co consistent group. And uh, speaking with uh, uh, young people on focus groups, you can feel the, uh, that uh, kind of. Uh, uh, a barrier, or not a barrier, but um, uh, the, this difference is uh, around uh, 25 years because uh, uh, those who uh, uh, who are younger, for example, when we uh, uh, speak about the figures of authority of how they use uh, internet and so on, we do not hear much about television, uh, about television, about TV hosts. They don't uh, speak about them. Younger people who are over 25, they mention them quite uh, quite often. Uh, and um, uh, another issue in uh, br uh, breaking this uh, 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 in the different uh, age groups, it's uh, uh, we have only. Uh, so the issue is that to have all these groups, to have enough people in in them. I mean, over 100, and uh, as our uh, 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 surveys, uh, regular surveys, have uh, 1,600 people, it's uh, well enough, enough to break them in four groups or even in six groups, and uh, uh, quite uh, we try to uh, now also uh, divide them in uh, six groups, and what we see and uh, why it is I interesting and important. Uh, to uh, to have this break, uh, break um, dif uh, well differences because uh, we see uh, how different uh, uh, people evaluate uh, support of the uh, of the regime. Uh, either they are nearing pension age or they have uh, already passed pension age because uh, it's much uh, about pension reform. And we see that, and we saw that pensioners are still as supportive of Putin as they were, uh, even more. So they are now the biggest fans of the regime. And uh, people who are nearing pensioners are the, uh, the uh, biggest skeptics. So in this sense, it uh, adds to our analysis. And speaking about the regions and persecutions, I. I do not have particular examples, but I was following these three stories, uh, uh, Ekaterinburg, um, uh, 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 Arkhangelsk, which is a protest about uh, Shia's uh, uh, garbage dump, and also conflict uh, about uh, the border uh, between Ingushetia and Chechnya, very similar politics, and there was uh, this uh, 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 Kind of a rep well, I would say repressions on a regular basis. Uh, I'm following these from the very beginning, and almost every 
every week there is another story that uh, another person was fined for uh, 2,000 uh, euros. So the fines are pretty big. And for people who are living in the regions, they're extremely big. And uh, some people are just uh, uh, were jailed. Uh, and those are are those who organized organized the protest events and also we we also what i also see that uh, uh, three main uh, three main political forces or activists of the three main political forces are being persecuted uh, uh, specifically it is open russia of khodorkovsky uh, it's uh, navalny uh, supporters and also interestingly kprf communist party which also uh, the, the newspapers in several, uh, Tula, I think, in some other uh, um, regions were closed down. Uh, some some were uh, also got fined. So this is uh, what is happening on a regular basis right now. How to explain that with the uh, Communist Party? Because that has been seen as the loyal opposition for <coughs> years. Well, uh, I think because it, uh, the Communist Party is still the real party, uh, the, I, I maybe the only real party, big real party that we have, though of course it is being tamed by the regime. And uh, if you see the uh, new figures, uh, new figures which were, I think, uh, uh, yesterday there was, uh, there was publications that they got the almost 80% of their budget from the state. Uh, even the even United Russia Party get, uh, uh, gets less from the state, about only 60%. Uh, so, but uh, they have the real structure. Uh, they have uh, uh, the organizations that are working and uh, they're trying to do something, but of course they're scared. I think, uh, first of all, because of the example of uh, just Russia, who was almost ruined after their they took active uh, role in uh, protest in 11 and 12. And uh, so uh, they are very cautious, but also they feel that uh, this is their, their agenda, social agenda, which is now much more important. They tried to uh, exploit it, but too cautiously. I mean, with pension reform, they were speaking of referendum by didn't do anything because I mean they're scared I think but still uh, we I see it as a real uh, sti still real structures of uh, who try to address the needs of uh, the ordinary uh, public and ordinary public are rather poor socially vul vulnerable and this is the uh, agenda in the times of uh, bad economy yeah, next question. Uh, hi, my name is Torben Holt. I'm also a pensioner. I also got two questions. Um, first question is, uh, I'm a little bit curious about uh, uh, one thing you didn't maybe did not address uh, really, about the difference between the big cities and the countryside regarding your, uh, your investigations. Uh, and also regarding uh, the interview uh, you object to, picked is uh, how did you pick it from big cities or on the countryside? I guess it's more, it's a long way from uh, Moscow to, uh, to Vladivostok and, uh, you know, Siberia. Uh, and the other question is uh, regarding internet and, and sources from, from the West, let's say. Is it uh, free access all over the country? Is it blocked or how is it really at the moment? So, age, uh, mm, so differences between uh, big cities and the uh, country. Uh, so, two, uh, two thirds of Russians live outside big cities. And so, uh, the situation there is uh, different in a sense, uh, in a sense of economy, in a sense of information. Uh, Though, of course, these differences can be a little bit uh, alleviated because. Uh, much of the internet uh, is also on the mobile uh, right now, but still it's different. And um, uh, but uh, these differences we have in our public opinion polls and can monitor. 
Of course, uh, the focus groups that we do the, usually in Moscow, though, uh, in next uh, uh, several years we plan to do more outside of Moscow. But uh, with focus groups, uh, uh, we only, uh, I mean, it's very limited uh, use. Uh, we only want to understand the logic, how people explain. Of, of course, the explanation can be different. But still, uh, uh, the figures of public opinion polls helps us to understand the differences and not uh, uh, overestimate the uh, results of focus groups. Because uh, quite recently, we have this uh, uh, new trend uh, uh, in Russia. That some, uh, some groups are doing only focus groups and starting even to uh, calculate the percentage from the <laughs> <laughs> participants on focus groups and uh, then uh, trying to mm, challenge somehow uh, uh, our work, but we don't uh, buy it as a very, very good, uh, uh, get very good argument. But still, it's it's happening. But I think it's very important. Then uh, for every for every task, there is its own instrument. If you want to uh, see the uh, the divisions. In the public opinion, it's only representative uh, uh, surveys with their limitations, but still this is the uh, only instruments you can use for and focus groups for understanding arguments and arguments of different different groups. I mean, for example, we try to understand pension reform, the reaction to the pension reform. We, we uh, invited those who were opposed opposed it and it was absolutely majority 80 percent uh, 80 89 percent i think uh, but we also uh, invited uh, the uh, supporters of pension reform and to and uh, wanted to hear their arguments and this helped us to understand better so and uh, when we have this limited use i think uh, just to understand the arguments i think it's uh, sometimes enough to do even in big cities, uh, but invite, for example, the, the poorest uh, people, the most vulnerable people to hear the argument and then try to uh, put it on the, on the figures, this logic. No, yes, of course. Of course, on, uh, on many issues, uh, on... Uh, uh, LGBT issues, for example, that I that I showed, uh, on they're more supportive of the uh, uh, regime. They're le uh, more uh, negative towards the West, and uh, they are less exposed to the different views. Uh, so they are more dependent on TV, and uh, so uh, because you always have to have an idea that you need something, and you know where to find it. I mean, the access to the internet is free. It's free and uh, there is a broadband connections going to the to the countryside because it's a state program. And uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Russia, internet is relatively cheap and it is relatively good. Uh, but again, <coughs> you have uh, uh, an idea uh, what you need to find on the internet, what to check on the internet. It, and this comes with the education, with the experience and so on, which is in big cities. But would you say that so the urban-rural divide among the youth is more important? That, I mean, despite the vast distances in, in Russia from east to west, it's, it's still the urban-rural that is uh, decisive when it comes to values and, and outlook? And, and no, it's Not one of the dimensions. In no, it's or in St. Petersburg or yeah, in, in it's more important uh, whether it is big city or small town. Uh, yes, more important uh, because, uh, uh, well, for many years, uh, well, TV was the main source of information, it ch and it shaped the public opinion. So it's, uh, of course, it's more different and more peculiar uh, when you have national republics or North Caucasus, for example, as the uh, region in itself, uh, where the, the habits uh, and some basic habits are different, uh, more uh, more traditional and so on, uh, or influenced by Islam as well. So it's kind of a uh, different um, 
different sphere, but uh, not uh, in in numbers. Not many people are living there. And, uh, others, it's more so Soviet. Have this Soviet legacy. Okay, uh, we have uh, a couple of questions here in the front. So let's start here. Hi. <clears throat> I'm Daniela Slabinski from uh, the Environmental Youth Organization, Nature and Youth. Um, we work a lot in, in Russia, and in the last couple of years, we've noticed that there's, um, there are a lot of new movements and organizations in Russia. And I was just curious um, whether you have any statistics on the number of young people who are members of or organized in a movement or organization. It can be like social organizations or charity even, environmental and so on. Thank you. Uh, well, we, we looked on this uh, issue as well. And uh, what we saw that we looked on the activism in general. And what we had that uh, um, well, there are different kinds of activism. Uh, for example, young people are more active uh, on uh, such uh, groups connected with the uh, uh, sports societies. I mean, it's natural. Or uh, working as volunteers, so it's more, uh, more popular. But uh, volunteerism in itself is not very popular as a movement in Russia. And uh, uh, we uh, try to mm, uh, compare the figures of different kinds of activities in Russia and the United States, taking the Pew Research uh, figures. And uh, the, um, the pattern was uh, pretty con consistent with uh, such uh, uh, youth com uh, parents committees with uh, uh, some uh, local groups. So they were much the same. I mean, the... Uh, the pattern was very uh, w very similar, but not on, uh, but uh, except uh, with volunteerism, because in Russia it's only about five six percent who are in volunteer work, and in in the United States it was uh, almost I mean fifty or something, so much more. So, uh, but uh, with uh, different uh, different, um, for example, local activities, we do not see that it's only about young people. So young people are uh, part of all of this, of uh, uh, local groups, of protest groups, but they're not the, the, the most active. So uh, in many of these, uh, uh, they're just one of the age groups who are taking, taking part. It's only uh, with, again, with sport, sport societies and some, something else, I'm not quite sure what now, it's more, uh, more about young people. But it's not uh, the case when you look generally on this. Krista? Uh, <coughs> well, okay. My name is Jan Thompson, formerly Ministry of the Environment, now uh, pensionist. Uh, one aspect which you did not mention is the influence of religion uh, across ages, uh, age groups, across uh, regions, cities. Would you like to comment on that? Especially the, the, of course, the influence of the Orthodox Church. Well, uh, actually, I was not looking on it, and uh, well, uh, it's hard for me to comment right now. Well, so probably, maybe if I didn't uh, take it, maybe the difference is not so big. I mean, because I, uh, with the, these uh, these figures that I was looking for several years, I picked up uh, first of all the figures the question with significant differences but still I think I have to look it uh, look it up to to be uh, to be uh, precise but uh, with the <coughs> with the uh, Orthodox Church in general uh, it's more a cultural issue in uh, uh, in Russia and uh, we see that uh, uh, religious groups or people participated actively in the uh, religious community, uh, orthodox community or not or orthodox, uh, uh, there are very small uh, amount of people who participate. It's only about several percent. 
So it's very hard to differentiate uh, in these figures who, who these people are. My guess it's more about uh, older generation. Uh, but uh, the, uh, uh, with activism, it's uh, not a significant issue in general. My name is Talgat. I'm a research fellow here at NUPI. Uh, so it's not secret that there is a huge labor migration from Central Asia to Russia. So I, I'm just curious, do you have any information maybe how uh, yours uh, attitude towards this? Are, are any there any changes in, the, in cohorts? Mm. Well, again, I was not looking particular on it, uh, but uh, and uh, the better specialists to talk about it. Only I, must, I can say that uh, uh, in some of the recent polls, uh, young people were a little bit more friendly, a little bit more friendly, which, as uh, as if I remember. Uh, rightly, it w was not exactly the case because I remember when I looked it up uh, several, a couple of years ago, uh, the young people were more positive to LGBT people, but uh, uh, as uh, hostile towards migrants uh, as uh, anyone else, which is not uh, uh, exactly uh, the case in the poll, recent poll I was looking up, but. To be sure, you have to look at several polls. To, I mean, it's not enough to look at only one figure or two figures. So, I will be cautious <laughs> here. But but after 2014, uh, the attitudes towards migrants from Central Asia changed, and people became more positive. Is that a lasting trend? Uh, because then it was the West that became yeah. the, the other, and now you show that younger people are more tending to become more positive to the West. Does that an, have an effect on the othering process and, and attitudes towards migrants? Yeah, if I uh, remember rightly, so the w uh, yes, the, it was first the effect of uh, conflict with the West, mm -hmm. but also the effect of economic crisis when uh, uh, less people uh, come, mm -hmm. uh, less people came to Russia. Uh, and uh, in big, uh, partly, uh, partly maybe it was uh, the argument was uh, that I had with Natalia Zubarevich, for example, that uh, it may, maybe uh, people get more u uh, used to migrants in big cities, which I am not sure that this is the case because in Moscow, figures in Moscow we see that this issue again started to rise. Uh, with uh, uh, migration being uh, migrants uh, becoming uh, uh, more and more uh, a heated issue again. Uh, it's not as big as in 2013 during the mayoral elections when Navalny picked this issue and Sabyanin uh, has to pick this issue. And uh, in focus groups in Moscow, around this time it was the most, I mean, I mean, people who were uh, very calm and well, talk calmly to each other, then this topic came up and they became, I mean, curious that uh, they're taking out jobs, they're, well, <coughs> everything. Uh, then it calmed down, but still, uh, still, still we see that this uh, topic in focus groups, it uh, uh, comes up, comes up, though not so heated, Debates are not so heated right now, but still it is there and it is on the rise again. So it's not only about the conflict, I think it's on, uh, also about the uh, crisis, where less people come for some time maybe. And uh, now we are in a kind of a, maybe not in a recession, but not, on, not in the economic growth, no economic growth, so not less opportunity for people to come. Next question, Helena. Thank you for a very interesting talk. Uh, my name is Helena Shegesta. I'm from uh, the Norwegian newspaper Aftenposten. And I wanted to hear more about the restrictions on internet. And I was wondering, is there now a window for the government to impose these uh, restrictions while this, because this generation is not so big and not so interested in politics? Because when the next generation is coming of age, I guess they will be even more depending on the internet. So could you say a little bit about that and what is the goal 
where where's the end game of these pending restrictions well i i don't know uh, exactly about the goal well I only can say generally it's uh, to have things more under control. We don't know whether it will end up with uh, uh, Chinese style. Uh, well, there is a capacity to do so. But uh, again, it's uh, people who are uh, uh, specialists in these issues, they usually say that uh, quite often it's uh, not only about the restrictions, it's also about budgets to just to spend money and uh, resources on these uh, equipments and so on. And uh, you see m uh, many of these issues are not uh, enforceable right away, but this kind of a big goal and very lucrative <laughs> uh, goal. So, uh, of course, there is, um, and there are different instruments. It's on not only about um, restrictions, it's about trolls, it's about uh, um, it's not only the goal in itself, but uh, as uh, government is uh, becoming the most, the biggest investor in uh, this uh, digital economy, this will also change the sphere. Now it's more uh, open and more competitive with Yandex being one of the biggest uh, Russian firms and uh, uh, well, very competitive uh, abroad, but uh, with more uh, resources uh, pouring into it, it will become uh, uh, unintentional. I mean, it's not intention in itself to make it state sector, but it will be state sector in the long run because uh, it is one of the goals to, ma uh, to keep Russia uh, competitive and with uh, less uh, business funds because well you well there is some uh, as i understand uh, money coming from china again not from the west and uh, the west is not uh, the uh, russia is not very good place uh, for investment for western companies with the uh, buying vostok uh, investor who actually invested in yandex is being uh, jailed and his colleagues so so it's kind of a uh, not only about the goals but about the bigger inevitable in some sense inevitable trends that making this fair more state dependent which means i mean <coughs> that uh, well it will be not uh, so free uh, so so competitive so but kind of what you can do about it so, yeah, so it's not only about restrictions, it's also about the other things. I think we have time for one more question, if there is, if there is not. Um, uh, I, I read an article, an uh, interview last week, uh, where uh, Eugeni Gontmacher said uh, that uh, the young generation of Russians are refusing to become uh, an object of uh, mass manipulation of the authorities. That's the, the headline of the article. Um, with, with the more internet savvy uh, <coughs> new generation, do you think th they are resistant, more resistant to this kind of manipulation? I'm, uh, maybe Gontmacher is drawing t uh, taking it too far, but but uh, <laughs> but but do you think uh, it would be difficult for the Kremlin to to uh, orchestrate the kind of campaigns they've done in in the past uh, and winning the the hearts and minds of the Putin generation? I think it's uh, uh, surely uh, more difficult to do. So it's not that straightforward. Then you take five TV channels, <laughs> and just uh, uh, and that's it. Uh, now it's uh, uh, harder uh, to do, and less resources can be spent on it. But still, the situation uh, in Russian economy is stable, and there's a surplus in the budget, so the situation is not that bad. Uh, but 
yeah, and I think the Kremlin will try to um, work with the young people, but uh, as I said, uh, again, it's uh, too few of them, and they are uh, 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 more easily integrated within the system. So less p they put less pressure on the system in, uh, in economic sense, in political sense. So uh, I don't see uh, young people as a big, uh, big problem. And, uh, but still I think there will be some change, but it is not um, the change that, they, uh, that uh, these young people will lead this change. It, it kind of a change that will come inevitably, but rather slowly, when uh, uh, the majority will be uh, uh, independent and uh, inter independent internet users. Well, the, the majority will be uh, confident uh, in the internet. Uh, this will be the uh, another another country, but st it still have to happen, and it will not happen in uh, even uh, <laughs> by 2024. No. But change is inevitable, and uh, I think we'll end at that note. Uh, I would like to thank Denise uh, very much for for joining us. Before we we end, though, I would just like to inform that this is the last seminar we have before the summer. But you are all uh, heartily welcome uh, at our annual Russia conference, which will take place on the 5th of September this year. The topic is uh, Russian foreign policy and identity. Uh, so uh, I hope to see all of you at the House of Literature uh, on uh, the 5th of September. But as for now, please join me in giving Denise a big hand.